Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a flip through of my latest illustrated journal of my uh, recent trip to Italy. Now, an illustrated journal is another word for a visual diary, and I keep these like religion. My uh, visual diaries have drawings and photos and hand lettering and found papers, lots of stuff to tell a story. So I'm going to go through this page by page and talk about the techniques that I've used throughout. Clearly, there's going to be plenty of armchair travel involved, but I also, more than that, I really hope that this gives you some ideas that you can take away and use in your own pages. So please stay tuned. If you like journal arts, altered books, and vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, please be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications. That way you'll know when I post a new video and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go look at pages. I made this handmade book before I went on my trip. It is super easy. It's a single signature, and it's made from mixed papers. It was very inexpensive and very easy to make. And there's a whole video showing how I made this blank book. So if you'd like to make your own, there's a link to that video in the text box below this one. And you can go get them. This, uh, one of the mixed papers I used was from a, a magazine, so it's got writing here. And then I put some gesso down on it for some texture, which meant that I needed a formidable, powerful drawing to stand up to that, which is what I have here. I used a, a Derwent ink tense stick, something like this because I carry a box of them with me in my travel kit. So take your stick. It's not gonna give a lot of detail. You can see that, but it's gonna give a lot of pop when you activate this with some water. Something like that, let's see. So when you activate it, it turns into an ink and hey presto. So these are super fun to travel with if you have them. And that is a lion. It's an old one, uh, probably from around the 12th century. And this would have been, there would have been a column here on his back. They're called column uh, holding lions. Here is another one, a column bearing lion. And this is one that I drew with um, just using a very, very, very fine tipped art pen. And I had already tea dyed the page. So that's where that messy look is coming from here and then adding some gray wash to it. And these are just part of my story. Uh, this is from a, a free brochure. And it's a, a picture of the inside of uh, the cathedral in Modena. Now, this church was extraordinary, and I could not draw it if I started today and, and <laughs> it took six weeks. So I like to use found papers to sometimes do intricate drawings. And the best place for found papers are free brochures. This is a church that I had a stab at. It's... um. I did this with a fountain pen, and fountain pen ink is water-soluble, so again, when I activated that with my water brush, it got all smushy and forgiving. And there's a, another version from some found uh, brochure. This is... 
I, I love, I'm really attracted to stone and masonry and carving. I work a lot in old churches. Uh, the Romanesque are my, is my favorite era, so the churches I look at are like 12th, 11th, 10th century. And this one it was a 6th century capital. And uh, this is how it looked, and then this is a bit of a detail of the face. And again, I just drizzled my brush, which already had some gray paint on it, and then added some drizzles for drama. Here I have a pocket. And this pocket was made from my tax bill. Thank you, HMRC. And inside now, I've got a place where I can put some postcards. And I am postcard mad. It might not, you might not think that makes sense, but there are so many things when I'm traveling. It goes so fast, and I don't have time to take everything in. And yeah, I do take a ton of photos, but I love getting postcards in the gift shop. In this case, from the Scravinci Channel Chapel, Chapel in um, Padova, and now I have these both as a memory and as a point of reference if I want to do try doing some painting based on the scenes that were in this chapel. Now, so they're in here. I've got my little envelope that makes them look pretty. And there you go. This turned out really well. This is a detail of a photograph that I made of a distressed fresco. And boy, there are a lot of frescoes in the churches I was in. But you can see here, there's the, a, a book, a Bible. Here's a finger. So I just was so attracted to this messy fragment. What I did to try to lean into that is I printed this. It's a photo that I took and I edited it and then I printed it on deli paper. Uh, deli paper is what you would, I guess you'd wrap sandwiches in at a deli. You don't really find this in the wild here where I live in the UK. So I bought this online. And it came in these sheets that are A4 that fit my printer. Thank you. There is a shiny side, which will repel ink. But then there's also a matte side. So I put that matte side upside down in my printer, which is where the images went. This image went. So what you have now is it's semi-transparent, semi-translucent, and it lets that handwriting that's underneath peek through, and it just makes mystery and drama, and it pops, and I love it so. When I first started making illustrated journals, and I've been doing it for a long time, they were, they're good, but they were more like documents, uh, you know, in a cartoon fashion of what I ate and where I walked and what I saw. As I've gotten older, I've decided to loosen up and my visual diaries are a lot messier uh, and they lean between visual diary and art journal meaning that sometimes there's stuff in here that's not necessarily part of the story. It's just pretty and it makes me happy, which is what we have here with this guy. He was, he, it is kind of a memory because this came again from a free brochure. And when I'm traveling, one of the first things I do is go to tourist information and start scarfing up those free brochures even if it's not things that I necessarily want to visit. Um, it's just another word for free art supplies. And this was of a museum, and uh, I just fussy cut that out and then glued it onto this handwritten page. 
you know, I always wanted a boyfriend that looked like a, a Botticelli angel. Maybe in the next lifetime. This is um, in the town of Ravenna. Ravenna is very famous for its art. And in their museum, they had this piece here. Again, I'm using a postcard because I couldn't draw that ever. I don't know who could. It's a special calendar. It's called a Paschal calendar. And it's from the 6th century. It was all carved. All these little little digits here, they're carved. Makes my wrist hurt just to look at it. And this was a calendar. Uh, at the time, there were at least two different calendars in the Christian year around the planet. And Easter itself is a movable feast. It changes from year to year, the date. And, and this was had a 19-year cycle where you could figure out what day Easter was falling on, no matter which calendar you were using. I, <laughs> I have to say, I think I just would have guessed aggressively, but silly, silly old calendars. Oh, you know, something I'd love to put in my visual diaries. Okay, so you have your art and your, your history. Boy, do I love to write about my clothes. So I had kind of a capsule wardrobe. I took some uh, black jodhpurs, my overcoat, a black turtleneck, Levi's, and a cashmere scarf that is the size of a car. And boy, do I love that thing. You can use it as a shawl or a scarf. And um, one of the reasons I like to draw my clothes, and I encourage people to put that in their diaries, whether you're traveling or whether it's just your day-to-day, -day, is because, you know, even if you look back in a few years, that's the sort of thing you're going to forget and you're going to, and it's just going to bring back all kinds of memories of who you were and, and what you were wearing and why. And I love the idea that say, if this outlives me, maybe in 30 years or 130 years or 230 years, Somebody can look back at this and they're going to say, the, I, I don't know, I think, I think if I had a three-year-old, 300-year-old hand-drawn diary of what somebody was wearing, it would be fabulous. I like to add maps. This is where I was staying. This was a fountain. This is the train station. And this is where all the good stuff was happening. Again, it's good to get a map down because that's the sort of thing that you forget. Okay, that was also from a free brochure of uh, a museum that I did go to. This is my friend Matthew that uh, we travel together a lot. And this is just a photograph of some more carvings. And you can see here that to gussy up the pages and make them a little bit more interesting. I've just, you know, I've got my handwriting here, my, my stories, my captions, but I've also added some mark making. Just straight up mark making. There's nothing special about it. With some watercolor, oops, <laughs> now I have more. Uh, some watercolor, let's just lean into that. And uh, here I've got some watercolor splatters and drizzles. So go ahead, if you've got some space, fill it up with some mark making. This is from a fresco in one of the churches that I visited from around the 14th century. And it was very distressed and modeled. So after I did my watercolor painting of it, when I got home, I took this stencil, which is of, uh, I guess it's a, st <laughs> a stencil of cracks. And I used my blending tool and an ink pad to try to add some cracks to mimic that distress. The effect was so-so, uh, but I'm not sorry I tried. And again, then we have a memory on top of a memory. 
because I have a memory of having <laughs> of trying this effect and um, and the fresco itself. I had better luck over here. Again, I've got this page from a magazine and then the gesso on top of it. And when I took my ink pad and then tried to pull this idea over to this side of the page, it really popped on that gesso. So that I'm happy with. That's me posing with a very old lion in Modena. Here is another, remember when I showed that envelope for my tax bill? I bound that in as a page and that's the big side. And then this is the shorter side. You know, if you fold, when I folded the envelope in half as a page. And what I've done is use it as a, a little bit of a tuck spot here. So that's gonna stay in. And that's from a, a church that I hiked up to. It's the, the ticket stub kind of thing. And just gonna live there in that tuck spot now. This is from just a plain old brown paper bag. Was it a bag? And I wanted to, and before I went on my trip, I again, I work a lot with in churches with old masonry and, and columns and stone carvings. And so again, I used a stencil. This one has arches and I used gesso and black ink to make some messy arches, which echo some of the drawings and photographs that I have throughout of uh, stone stuff. Again, and this is a page from a scrapbook pad. And it uh, one of the, the patterns that it had was stone, wear, stone work. So um, this is from a fifth century carving, the 400s. Of it's called a Stella, Stell, Stella, and it's funeral art. So it would have been over a kind of a tombstone in 412. And this is where I've written, written a good book a bit about some of the food that I had. I would like to have drawn more food. Uh, the dilemma there is how do you draw your food while it's still hot or before it melts and enjoy that and still draw? The answer here is sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just take notes and then come back and write about it. There is a story with these pages. This is a drawing and a painting with some watercolor that I did of a pilgrimage walk uh, from Bologna Center to uh, a church called San Luca on the top of a hill. And the walk is very famous and it goes up, up, up through five kilometers of porticos. It's all covered. And it was covered because... Uh, uh, the priest used to carry an icon as part of the pilgrimage up, up, up to the church. And if the weather was bad, it might get wet. And that was uh, not on. So the, the townspeople built these porticos that just go the whole, the whole walk. And they're beautiful and cool and interesting. And this is from the free brochure which of course I could have, you know, glued in here or something, but uh, I've got a postcard of it later and that was kind of pushing it portico wise. So I decided to draw it instead. Now this is not a good drawing. This is not a good painting. I don't care. Again, let me point out that if, let's say my grandmother or a great aunt or a friend or a perfect stranger made a book like this and drew 
this this messy, imperfect place where they walked and had a memory. Or they didn't. So what if they didn't and they wrote over here, I was going to draw it, but it was too ugly, so I didn't bother. Well, that's a shame. So instead, if they made their own fun, messy drawing version of it, wouldn't you say, well done you, and that's a good story? Do not be afraid to just jump in and draw it awkwardly. It's your book. And it's only paper, people. There, that's my rant. I'll get off my soapbox. Ha, not likely. Uh, this is some rust that I had originally put into the book and some mark making with dye. I had planned to put something on these pages, but uh, I had a few more pages than I needed, ultimately. So I'm just going to leave this again, art journal style. It looks cool. I don't have to force myself to draw or work into it. Over here is from another gift shop at a, from a church. And I bought some small pieces and they came in this little bag. So I tore the bag, rough tore it to size, glued it down. And so now we have a souvenir here and I have a pocket. And inside this pocket are some tickets to this palazzo that I visited. Some holy cards from some of the churches. That's St. Anthony of Padua, Padua, and there's a little relic there. a business card from a restaurant that I really liked. And so now I have this little pocket to hold my smalls. Ah, there is a sandwich that I did manage to draw. Sandwiches, uh, it wasn't going to get cold or hot, so I just went mad and um, drew that. And wrote some more about food. This is a photograph that I took of the ceiling of the ceiling of a chapel in Ravenna. And again, Ravenna is very famous for its mosaics and its art. And this ceiling, I'm not even into mosaic and I almost uh, fell down. It was so beautiful. It, there, it's just hard to explain how really dramatic they are. As far as using photos in my illustrated journal or in your illustrated journal, again, I took these as I was going and I printed them up when I got home. You don't have to have a printer. Most copy shops or places that make copies now or photographs are Bluetooth or even you could put it on a stick. So take your photos and if you don't have a printer, just do that and you can print them up in all different sizes and use them in your book. This is the Empress Theodora and she was one tough cookie. You did not mess with her. She was uh, a regent and a, a ruler in Ravenna in I think around the fourth century. I may have that a little bit wrong, but this is from a mosaic. Uh, I tried to suggest that here with these little what's its boxes, but I, I just could not. Uh, I'm probably not ever going to be the kind of person who would just draw in my uh, mosaic tabs every last one. I don't have to. One of the things that I cherish when I am walking especially in a very old city, is something like this. And these, again, are photographs. They're not museums. They're not fine art. They are just uh, distressed bits of walls. And you can see layer under layer under layer, which is 
an effect that I'm always trying to get into my own original artwork. So I took a lot of photos of that. Here's another pocket. This one is from, uh, again, I bought postcards and uh, they came in this little sack. So I rough tore it. So these would hang out uh, just a little bit like that. These are from, these are all from Ravenna. And these are mosaics of a ceiling. That was an extraordinary church. And you've got your mosaics up here from the 5th century and earlier. And there is another picture of Theodora. See what I mean? You do not want to mess with this woman. Here's a drawing that I did by hand in a Modena Cathedral, and it's of a kind of like a, a column, a capital on a column. It's called an architrave, and it's of an angel holding up the world, as they do. And uh, just to make it a little bit more, to give it a little oomph, I've just added this watercolor wash here. So it's just ink and then some watercolor wash. Not really corresponding to anything I saw at the time. Again, this is that uh, uh, from a scrapbook pad and I added some ink for distress. I could easily work on this page, but as I said, I didn't need it, so I'm just going to let it be all art journal and cool. On this paper, this brown paper, I, free art supply, free brochure, free art supplies. And they had these teeny tiny little thumbnail size photos. And so I cut them out, glued them down, and hey presto, it's a page. I wanted to fill this up a little bit. There was just some space over here making me mm, not, not happy with it. And so I've just taken some terracotta color, watercolor, and added some mark making, which I think kind of echoes this color here. So be sure and fill up those pages if you like that. Here's another little pocket from a little bag at a different little church. More holy cards. I think this one opens. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is old timey looking, but it's from one of those brochures, a map that I got at the Tourist Information Center. This is another envelope, business envelope, and I just bound it into the book before when I was making the blank book itself. And inside are postcards of more of those mosaics. And there's that beautiful, extraordinary church in Ravenna. These are all mosaics. It's just breathtaking. And now when I put them back in here, again, now I can use this for painting if I want, or ideas, inspiration. They go in here, and it just makes the page look pretty because you can see them through the cellophane. And then I also use this as a jumping-off point to make some mark-making that sort of kind of echoes the mosaic. This is from one of those uh, bags that postcards came in. And I just took it apart, and now I've used it as an art journal page. Because, again, of these mon monotone mosaic things. 
That is San Luca. That is the church that uh, I walked up to through the portico. It was a good walk. It was an okay church. Like a lot of pilgrimage, the, the few pilgrimage walks that I have been on that go up, up, up. It's fine for the first four and a half miles. And then uh, the last half mile is, is yikes. It's hard. This is a crypt uh, from a different church in Ravenna, and it was actually flooded, which, which was scary looking. This is a technique that I use when I want to draw something that's I think maybe I can draw, but it's kind of overwhelming. And uh, it was a big crypt and a strange place. So what I did was I picked out in my mind just a box like that, a box-shaped view. Okay, it's imperfect. I don't have a real box. Those are called finders or ciders. I don't have one. I just have my imagination. So I looked at the crypt and just in my mind marked off what I thought a bite-sized chunk that I thought I could handle. And I drew that. I drew it with a pencil, then I went over it with watercolor and then highlighted that, outlined it with a fine tip pen. So if there's something that you want to try to draw and maybe it's too much, just try taking a little chunk of it. You're still going to get a lot of memory. You won't be sorry. It's a pocket that I made from a sack that postcards came in. And I've just added this is part of a train ticket. It had to go somewhere. Let's see. Oh, there's me. Hi, I'm posing in a church. There's, there's the overcoat. And then this is a photograph that my friend Matthew took and had made into a postcard. So clearly I don't want to glue these down. They've got messages on the back. They can live in a pocket. I can take them out and read them and play with them. These are more photos of mosaics. in Ravenna. This is a, another brochure of a museum that I loved. This is in Modena and they have, uh, the cathedral is called the Duomo. The Duomo is, uh, from the same word as domicile. So it means home. And that's often, it's a common way to refer to cathedrals in certain parts of Italy as a Duomo. Okay, so the Duomo in Modena had a ton of statues and statuary and stone work that was um, becoming eroded because of the weather. So they moved a bunch of it inside and made a museum. I really like this brochure. And to make sure I don't lose it or that it doesn't just end up in a shoebox. I glued the back, which just had the, the prices and the times. Okay, don't miss that. And now I can open it up as a triptych and enjoy that and read that and get some ideas. And then I added some mark making to take up some of that space. Ah, these are all from that museum. This is a, a capital. I am just moved and intrigued by old stonework, partly because it's so evocative. And uh, oftentimes there are little stories or little jokes that the, the carver has put in there. And um, we, it's very, very, very rare to know the names of Masons going back into the 6th century, or I think this one's from the 12th century. And so there's something very moving and poignant about these creative people who had their visions, their talent, and they made things, and their names just don't come down to us. But their, their beauty and their work does. This is a column a capital. It was at the top of a column, and it's of uh, some mythological creatures, and they're called the uh, 
Is it antipodes, antipodes? All right, somebody help me out there. I don't know. But I really, really, really like drawing this. And I drew this with a water-soluble graphite pencil. Let's see. It's... This one's by Karen Dash, but a lot of people make them. Let's see, let's go here. And it goes down like pencil. And then you can activate it with water. And that didn't work. Let's try better paper. Water soluble graphite pencil, take two. And I'm using my water brush. And now when I activate it with some water, you can see it's turning into a, a gray toned ink. You can pick it up and move it around a little bit. I really, really, it's one of my all time favorite art supplies. Where was I? So that's what I used here. I drew it using the water soluble graphite pencil. And then when I activated the lines with my water brush, it turned into a gray wash. I am a tapophile. And a tapophile is someone who likes traveling and exploring via cemeteries and graveyards. It's not morbid. It is uh, because, as you can see, often cemeteries have beautiful art, architecture, stories, culture, history, and it's a, a good set piece way of exploring a place. This is one of the angels that was in the Bologna Cemetery. And the way that I did this effect, it would be fine as a photo, it would be fine as a drawing, but I actually printed this up on some thin, this is a kind of rice paper. It's, it's not the, the brittle rice paper that we're used to, but that's what it is. I bought it online. Um, crazy about it, but I'm, I'm learning to use it. And so I thought I would try doing this semi-transparent printing on it. And what I did was this. You could also use tissue paper or tracing paper or, again, the um, deli paper, any kind of transparent paper or even a cloth. Not transparent cloth, plain old cloth. But what you do, the technique is the same. If you are going to feed super thin paper through your printer, you can't just put it in your printer and expect it to print and turn out and, and play nice because it won't. I know because I didn't believe that and I tried and it ended in tears. So what you need to do is I've trimmed that thin rice paper to a shape that is smaller than my copier paper. And I taped it on using masking tape, like that. Now I put this in my printer and it pulled and everything turned out well, except the border, which is why I did it twice. And now I have this beautiful 
image that I can use in a lot of different ways. I'm definitely going to be putting this and other angels into altered books and art journals. But this one, I just rough tore and then glued on top of this handwritten page. So it's got, it's not exactly transparent, although you can see a little bit of the writing coming through the gown. But it is nice and soft and mysterious looking. This is just a hodgepodge of found papers. This was in one of the churches. It was like a, a prayer request thing. And this is another fragment of a train ticket. Here's where, again, I bound in that manila envelope, brown colored envelope. And this is the short side. Fold it in half and, and bound it in like a page. And, okay, there's another look at those porticos. And this is a postcard. I put it in here the way you would a tuck spot. Uh, this wasn't going to hold, so I glued it in. And now I have a page. The postcard itself is a page. I really like that. Here's... Another little envelope. And this is a brochure of the, the Church of St. Anthony in Padua. That was a crazy place. That is probably the, the, the most mad church that I have ever seen. And sometimes that's saying a lot. So I kept the brochure, and now it's going to go back into this little pocket, and it can stay there until I have time to take it in and maybe draw some of the things that are in there. Okay, this is a pistachio tart. Do I have to say more? I printed this up myself from an old atlas, and it's then I've circled the different towns that I visited. Here is a, a postcard that I just got. I haven't even had time to put it in the book. There's another map. Let's see. Let's have a look at that. This is the map that I used while I was there. Yes, I have Google Maps, but sometimes I need to see it um, like this. Okay, I need to see it with my own eyeballs. Here's all the churches, and the streets, and uh, you can see I used it a lot, which again makes it a tool and then a very nice memory. So rather than glue that down, also it's huge. I'm just going to clip these in using a bulldog clip. Coming home, we crossed the Alps. And so this is actually from the window of my plane. Something I rarely do. But uh, the Alps really cannot be... Uh, there aren't, I don't have words. It's just extraordinary and beautiful and it makes you want to say your prayers. And uh, that's my simple photograph of it. Okay, this is some ledger paper. I could add some writing. One thing I like to put in my books is what I find on my walks. That might be a bird's feather. It might be a rock. Uh, in this case, some ginkgo leaves. So I press those carefully, and then you have to be kind of careful when you glue these in. Don't put the glue on the leaf. I added the glue, kind of gloppy, to the page, and then press the leaf onto that. And then this is a 
super, super messy, fast, easy, fun sketch of what I could see from the window when I was waiting for my plane, which was delayed. I hope this has given you some ideas for working in your own pages. And please, please remember, you don't have to be going on a trip. You can make pages of your everyday life. And I have a video just about that, just about journaling your day-to-day. -day. And there's a link to that below this video if you'd like to get some tips for that. Uh, there's also a link to an online class about how to make and keep an illustrated journal. I am not going to be making classes going into the future, and I closed most of my classes, but ha-ha uh, on me, because about three days after I shut my classes down, I started getting requests for them again. And the one that I got the most requests for was the Illustrated Journal course. So I've opened that one back up. Check out the link below this video if you want to see what that's like. Or, and or, I have a playlist. If you go to my main page, Book and Paper Arts, here on YouTube, find the playlist tab and click on that and there's going to be a playlist that's just Illustrated Journals. And it's going to have tips and techniques and hacks and stuff. Good stuff. If you have any feedback or any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Until later, happy making.